Hey, so this screencast is going to be shortcutting you into building a web application with Node.js. And we're going to be using the Express.js framework, which is kind of the most popular framework and one of the easiest to learn. Uh, it's really a tremendous combination. And so we're going to be getting into it. I've done a video on this before, and a lot of people have done some great videos on this. But Express really, here mid-2014, made some changes uh, to where it'd be really difficult to follow along to previous videos. Because there's just a few key things that are different. So we're going to be getting into those right now. Um, in this 2014 updated video on how to get started with Node.js. If it's not on your machine, you're going to want to go to Node.js.org and install it. Um, and you'll know that that is working if you go Node-V and you've got a version. I'm running 0.10.22. Looks like they're up to 10.26, so I need to upgrade. Um, and then you should also be able to go npm-v and have a ver version of Node Package Manager. Uh, npm comes with Node, and that's basically how you install dependencies and you know do package management and all that stuff. It's really, really, truly great. So let's go ahead. We have those both there, so let's get into it. Let's install our first package. We're going to go npm install dash g for global express generator. Um, this is going to get us building Express apps right, really quick. It's going to generate the scaffolding for us. Um, and we have to do dash G uh, because it's got to be a global because we want to be able to execute it. And it's G because it has nothing to do with our project. We're installing this globally. Um, and you may get an error there that you don't have read-write permissions. Uh, and so you might have to do sudo on that npm install G. Uh, and then enter your password. But the way I've installed it, I don't have to do that. Um, so I can actually now run express as a command and then give myself an app name. I'll just call this XP2014. So there we go. I've actually generated an app now, an Express.js application. And you see all I have to do is go CD space XP2014 and do npm install. Before I do npm install, though, I want to show you what's actually taking place here. Let me open this in Sublime Text. Um, show you what they've done for us. They've built out the whole application, uh, but they haven't loaded all the dependencies yet. Instead, they've just put a package.json file, which is all that we're going to check into our GitHub repo anyway. Um, and then it's just a list of the dependencies that we need. Uh, you can see it's running Jade for templates, which I'm not actually a huge fan of Jade templates, so I'm going to redo this. Um, and then once we run npm install, you'll see that it starts adding all the dependencies into the node modules folder. And now we're good to go. It's installed Express for our application locally. Uh, it's installed Jade. It's installed all the stuff that we need. So I'm going to actually go up a level and go ahead and remove that and let's generate one again and this will be exp2014 and I'm also going to go dash dash Hogan because uh, I want to use Hogan templating which is basically mustache um, and then I also want to go C for CSS and do less they support less and they also support stylus why they don't support SAS I have no idea but they support less and stylus so there we go. Now I can actually do it again. CD space Express 2014. Do npm install. Let's go ahead and do that. And so now you can see that my package includes Hogan.js and less middleware. Yippee. So now I'm going to scroll back up before I did that. And it said if you want to run your app, just run this command here. Debug my application. And then you're going to run the bin www file. You can run that. And it says it's listening on port 3000. So now I can go localhost colon 3000. And there you go. There's my express. And you can see as I'm refreshing, it keeps loading up stuff. So now I'm running a web server. And I'm running a very, very basic web application on my machine. Uh, one of the cool things about Express is it runs as the web server itself. So it's really different from PHP or any of these... Uh, other technologies in that it loads your whole application in memory and then it sits as the server waiting for HTTP, HTTP requests to come through and then it responds to those. It never touches your file system again unless you have to access new images or write images. It sits in memory the whole time which is why it's so blazingly fast. Um, I'm going to cancel this out real quick and show you this bin www file. You can see that the My Application, it comes from right there. So I'm actually going to simplify that. I'm going to call it debug 
equals app now, which is a lot easier to remember. Bun. There you go. And so now I can, well, I forgot to hit save, didn't I? It runs just fine, but you won't see any debugging because it's looking for a different debugging name. So I've saved this file, and now I can run that command again. There we go. I'm seeing app. I'm debugging. Excellent. Good to go. Um, so it runs the debugger, and then it also requires my app.js file, and then it starts up the web server listening on port 3000. If I wanted to run multiple express applications at once, I could simply change this to port 9000. Let me cancel this. Start it up again, and now I can go port 9000, and there we go. We're running on port 9000. Uh, you'll also notice whenever I make a change, I have to cancel and reboot this application. That's pretty annoying, and it's going to get old really quick. Uh, so there's this great utility called NodeMon that we can use. Uh, you can go npm install g nodemon which is going to monitor your folder structure for changes and as you make file changes it's automatically going to cancel and reload your app which is great so now I can go nodemon and then bin www so there you go I'm going to listen to any file changes if I hit save uh, let me go ahead and hit save here and you'll notice it restarted my server save save so if I had a console log here then it now is going to log whenever I hit file save. So that's kind of, NodeMon is really great for that. So now we're running NodeMon. As we hit save, it's going to automatically restart our app, uh, and that's going to be a lot nicer for us. So let's get into building out our Express app. It's scaffolded in. It's working great. Uh, let's actually look at this app.js. Once again, www, this is just the server. has nothing to do with our application. All it does is load the debugger, and load in our app and now we're good to go. So let's look at app.js here and see what all's going on. Uh, the first thing we're doing is we're requiring some dependencies um, into our file and then we're requiring some routes but we're not using those routings yet we're just kind of requiring them and then we're creating our app here by running express. So this is where our app actually gets started um, and then we're setting our de default views to the views directory um, there we go, views directory, and so all our views are in here. You can see they look pretty much like HTML. We're just using that Hogan templating. And then we're setting our view engine to use HJS. So then we also load our debugger and some other stuff, and then we use our routes right here. This is how we tell our routes to get used. And then it, awesome, it also gives us our 404 handling and stuff like that. So... Let's get into building our first routes. I'm going to go ahead and nix the users for now. And I'm going to kill this users one for now as well. So we've required routes index, which is this file. And then we are using it for all our request paths. This slash just means we're going to use it on everything. So let's look at this index file right now. And so I don't confuse you. I'll actually kill that and we're just going to start a new one. We've required express. And then we've actually created our router file. And then we've exported this file. Module exports is what the return value of this whole file is going to be. So when I hit require route slash index, I'm actually going to pass the module exports from this file into this variable. So that's kind of what this module exports is. The router here gets adjusted by all our routes, and then I'm returning it as module exports if that makes sense. If not, you might want to just look into it a little bit more. Um, but here's what we're going to do. You're going to go router.get because we're going to be responding to a git request. And then I'm going to do my, uh, my actual route, which is just the index, the root. And then I'm going to give it a function with my request object, my response object, and then the function that I want to do when a user hits that, that default pathway. And I have two options here. I can go res, which is my response object. I can go res.send, which is just going to send text. Or you can send a JSON object. Um, or you can send a number for an HTTP code. That's just a 200 response. Let's actually start messing with res send. Or I can go res render, which is going to actually do a templating. I can find the file, which this is going to look for my index file. Um, and then I pass as my second argument a JSON object of all the 
values that I want to send to that templating object. Uh, so let's start with res send here. Let's pretend I'm making an API. Let's just say OK. So now I can hit there and I've got OK. And let me go ahead and refresh it. You'll notice that I'm getting an automatically, it made my type text HTML. Um, and then my status is automatically going to be a 200 code for the first time I save it. And then a 304 if it's not modified. So automatically it set my type to text HTML. So let's go ahead and make a 200 here. Now it's going to always give me a 200 status. Or I can go a 400. And that's going to give me a 400 status. So that's always going to get a 400 there, or once again, 404, 404 uh, 500. Um, if you just give it a first argument and it's a number, then that's going to be your HTTP status. If I want to start giving it a JSON object, there we go. So now I can just do that, and automatically I'm going to get JSON. And my type on my response is going to be application slash JSON, which is super great. So it's, as you can see, it's really nimble, really light for doing um, an API. Um, and then I can also do res.render. And let's look at our index file here and see. We're getting a title. Looks like title is the only argument it's expecting, or the only piece of data I'm expecting. So there we go, that will now render my index file with the my app. Let's go ahead and add a second value. Whoop, I'm not sure what key I hit. Age 33, and let's put in here. Oh, I can't type when I do these things, man. I'm the worst at it. So there you go, my app, 33 years old, because I'm passing it title and age, and you guys can figure out the rest as you go along. So that's pretty much how you're going to render your templates and how you're going to send your responses. Um, and so what we've done is we've, we've kind of built our router. We've added a get request. Let's say we wanted to respond to an API post. I can do post right there. Um, and then I can access all the post variables by going rec.query.name. Let's say their name came in or uh, anything like that. Query will be the all the params that came through. Um, here, let me actually do a get here. So there we go. Let me uh, console log. See there, my query object is showing age of 33, name equals will. So that's how I access my rec query object. Um, another thing that I can do is I can go get users. And so that will be users. Um, not found because I didn't save my file. Um, and if you don't do a response send of any kind, then it's just going to spin forever. There is no response taking place. So there we go, 200 OK. Um, let me go ahead and, so that's responding to my users. Let's say I wanted to be able to get an ID off of here. I can go ID, and that's going to be request params. So now whatever my second param is going to be is going to show up as params.id. So let me go users 33. And you can see that ID 33 is coming in right there. I'll just send so I'm going to send a 200 request uh, so it doesn't confuse it with my number. Um, there you go. So now it's going to say 33 34 and that's how we're going to do that routing. Um, and so then that gets passed through. Nothing happens. And now I'm using that on any and all routes on my page. You can also namespace that and just go users. Um, and then if I'm namespacing this to users, then I don't have to add users. I can just go slash ID and it will be the exact same thing. So if I actually did slash users here, it would not work because it'd be looking for users slash users. Um, and that would be what happens if I namespace it uh, to a particular routing. 
So that's pretty much your introduction to Node.js. If I flew through too quickly, um, then you might just want to rewatch the video. I try to be as quick as possible. Um, I do have another video that I will link to in the description on how to implement a MongoDB database using Mongoose. Um, and I'll also add an annotation for that somewhere around here. If you're not on mobile, you'll see that. And have yourself a great day.